Hi again then guys, and welcome to, of course, another installment of Beards and Cars. For those who maybe are new to the series, this is a podcast-style layout where we get more in-depth into discussions or countdowns or personal picks in a wide variety of topics. It usually tends to be about Gran Turismo or Forza or gaming in general, sometimes about other things as well, like YouTube or movies or life. And as far as this particular countdown goes, as you saw from the title, which doubtless will get less views than the Gran Turismo equivalent to this will, because that's just the nature of the audience on the channel at the moment. I have far more Gran Turismo subscribers than Forza subscribers, but as I've said for quite some time, Forza was always something that I wanted to do a ton of content for, and I'm really happy actually that I'm now able to do so much content for both Gran Turismo and Forza. Now, as far as this countdown, this one, for those who are unfamiliar with Beards and Cars, does lead on directly from an episode a few weeks back where I counted down my favourite cars of the entire Gran Turismo franchise, from Gran Turismo 1 right up until Gran Turismo Sport. This time we're doing the exact same thing, but for Forza instead. So all of the Forza games, Forza Motorsport 1 all the way through to Forza Motorsport 7, and Forza Horizon 1 through to Forza Horizon 4. And of course there's a lot of crossover between those games. Some cars were left behind, some were left and then brought back, one of which at least on this list was. So this time I've selected 15 vehicles. I selected 10 from Gran Turismo because Quite a few of my favourite cars simply have never been featured in Gran Turismo. So for me, it's just a case of having more cars that I've genuinely loved in Forza because the variety of cars has always been very good. Now, kicking us off first of all is a car that I would usually keep for last, but this list is going to be in no particular order. So of course, down below, you could put your 15, you could put your 10, you could put honourable mentions if you wanted to. Of course, don't go too crazy with it because nobody's going to read it if it's like 100 cars. But, kicking us off first of all, as I said, is actually my favourite car in real life, in the game, any game that it's available in, the Ferrari FF. Of course, I love having this car in Forza, it's in a number of the games. If I recall correctly, I think it was introduced in Forza 4, and it's been featured right up <clears throat> until now. I love it, I love everything about the car, it goes without saying, of course I'm going to love it in the game. There's not much to say about it that I haven't said before. So, I love it. <laughs> That's basically all you need to know. Secondly for me, I would say the Aston Martin Rapide. Of course, recently I did what turned out to be a very popular unboxing video, more popular than I expected it to be actually, for my Aston Martin Rapide model car. I love the Rapide. For me, as I've said a number of times, my two favourite Astons by far are the Rapide and the Signet, and then uh, a far distant third would probably be the Lagonda, because I like the weird stuff, I like the oddball cars, but at the same time cars which are useful, they're actually very practical. For instance, the Signet is the most affordable and practical Aston Martin ever made. A lot of people don't like it though, so for me this one, it's kind of unarguable, it's a pure Aston, it's a great throwback to stuff like the Lagonda, it has the luxury vibe, to me, the Rapide is easily one of the most elegant looking cars ever designed. And before you ask me, do I prefer the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso over the FF and the Rapide S over the Rapide, the answer to both is no. I prefer these original, purer forms. To me, the last thing that these two cars need is more power. They've already got more than enough. It's not really about being the most powerful thing around. They're just perfect cars, I think. Thirdly, for me, speaking of power, the SSC Ultimate Aero. Of course, I have to feature this one. It's very unfortunately no longer featured. I believe the most recent time that we saw this in Forza was Forza 4 and Forza Horizon 1. I think those two games were the last time that we saw it, because those two games were running at the same time. I don't think we've seen it since. Now, I hope that SSC comes back. I'm actually not a massive SSC fan in general. I have a, a lot of respect for the company, but the Twitara, for instance, I'm not a massive fan of. I think it's okay. The Ultimate Aero, though, really does it for me. Now, my favourite version actually isn't in the game. I prefer the slightly older pre-facelift version, which is featured in Project Gotham 4. If you look at the two, they're considerably different looking. This one, to me, I don't like the front end of quite as much, but it's an awesome car. It's my favourite hypercar, as I've said before. It's one of my three dream vehicles in my ultimate dream garage, alongside the Ferrari FF and the Y2K motorbike. 
I love it. I'm so glad that they had it in the game. When I first saw it, I didn't appreciate it, but I really grew to love it. I even built a, an R2 category racing version in Forza 4, and I used to destroy stuff like Super GT cars and various others online with it, because it does have the potential, you just have to know how to use it properly. Next up for me is another vehicle that I absolutely love, and it's probably my favourite truck ever. The Celine S331 Super Cab. This car, of course, as many of these will, featured in my top 50 favourite vehicles countdown. I love it because I like Ford trucks anyway. I like that kind of understated but very big and beefy look that they have. But this one to me, it's just, it's got the cool factor as well because Celine is such a cool company. I've always loved the Celine S7. And to me, this is just such a cool idea having this 450 horsepower truck with rear wheel drive that's a great drifter it sounds fantastic it's pretty affordable in the games again not available anymore unfortunately but i love this truck i absolutely love it to me no other truck really comes close to how much i love this one the nearest thing might be the uh, the ram srt 10 quad cab but even then that's no way near this for me Next up, I'm jumping way back to Forza 2, which was my first game in that franchise. And to me, this is interesting because I've mentioned before how shockingly similar my experience with playing Forza and Gran Turismo have been. That I played both franchises completely out of order, but actually played them in the same order as each other, which was really weird and completely unintentional. But for me, there's one car that always stands out from Gran Turismo 2, and there's one car that always stands out from Forza 2. Now, of course, for Gran Turismo 2, it's the Renault Espace F1, my favourite car of the entire Gran Turismo franchise. However, on this occasion, this car has a similar place for me in terms of a car that I'd never seen before, that I immediately loved, and I just thought was awesome and extreme and wacky. But for me, I don't love this one anywhere near as much as the Espace, but it's the Seat Cupra GT. I love this car. As far as I'm aware, it's the only game to feature it officially, I think. There might be some obscure one that I'm not thinking of, but I think this is the only game to have it. And it's just a gorgeous car. It looks almost like the Seat equivalent of a TVR Speed 12. I love it just in red with the grey back end, like a concept version. In fact, like the concept version. It's got around 500 horsepower. I can't recall what the weight is, but it's something like GT3 spec regulations, mid-engine rear-wheel drive. I just think it's a stunning looking car, and I'm surprised that more people don't know about it. It almost looks like the Seat equivalent, again, of like a Gumper Apollo or an Ascari A10, as if Seat made a supercar, almost, to me. I love it, absolutely love this car. Easily one of my favorites of the whole franchise, and one of the biggest ones that I want to be brought back Although, I don't think it will, because, in fact, Seat is not featured at all anymore in Forza. Next up for me, very obvious one, of course, the Maserati MC-12, featured in a ton of Forza games. In fact, there are more Forza games to feature it than those who don't feature it, which is a really nice thing to happen, because just like the Porsche Carrera GT, to me, the Maserati MC-12 needs to be in more games. It's in some. And the first game that I ever drove it in, I believe, was Test Drive Unlimited 1. It's perfect in that game. Everything about the car is treated with absolute respect. And to be honest, despite the fact that the game is not as developed as, say, Forza Horizon 4, which is the most recent place that you can drive the MC-12, and you can see it here, it actually kind of feels more nostalgic for me in Test Drive Unlimited, and there's something about those graphics that's just so appealing. They're not as realistic, but they look amazing in their own weird kind of way. So to me, the MC-12, of course, it's one of my absolute favorite cars. I believe it's the most beautiful Maserati ever made. And of course, Maserati being my favorite brand, I love all of their cars. So for me, of course, the MC-12 had to be on the list. Next up, speaking of cars which are not featured in enough games, in this occasion, most definitely not, the Mosler. The Mosler MT900. I adore Mosler. They're an amazing brand which unfortunately went bankrupt in 2013. Their entire history spanned less than 100 cars built, and they ran in everything from more amateur leagues with the original Consulier and the Raptor, right up until like GT3 style racing. And of course, they were banned because of how good they were. And on the street, they're one of the quickest things around. Now, the GTR is the ultimate version. 
212 miles per hour, not to 60 in 3.2 from a 600 horsepower engine. But in the game, we have the more mainstream model, if you can call it that, the MT900S, with around 530 horsepower. You're looking at about 190, 200 miles per hour, not to 60, about three and a half, so not exactly slow. A car which perfectly combines the road usability of a supercar with the style and raw, uh, racing ability of a 90s homologation GT1 style machine. I mean, it looks like a GT1 car. It's an awesome looking machine. It's one of the most dominating cars in the whole franchise, and it's actually so good that it makes the Gumper Apollo and Ascari KZ1 look fairly normal. And if any car can do that, it shows you how good it is. Next up for me, a car which I really wish Polyphony would add to Gran Turismo, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. It's not actually my favourite modern LMP, but in terms of objectively looking at a car and considering it, I do believe that this is the most beautiful LMP car ever. And of course, LMP, I'm saying anything from LMP 900 right up until today, so basically the past two decades. To me, this doesn't even have any rivals in terms of sheer beauty. The Aston Martin Lola B09-60, 5.9 litre naturally aspirated V12, one of the biggest engines in all of LMP-dom, and it's a screamer. It sounds fantastic, the performance is amazing, and the only reason why it didn't win, arguably, is because of the diesels. It just couldn't cope with those kind of advantages in fuel economy. In terms of performance, though, it's a fantastic car. I love it in Forza. It's such a good machine, and it was always one of the most popular online cars with the community as well, and it's not hard to see why. It really does tick all the boxes. It's an Aston Martin, which is just cool inherently. It looks stunning. It's got the iconic Golf livery. It sounds fantastic, and it happens to be one of the quickest LMPs in the game in terms of all-round ability. I love this car. This is probably in my top 10, actually favourites of all, not just the top 15. I love it. Definitely one of the cars that I wish they would bring back. Next up though, keeping in the world of modern LMPs, I'm coming to two other modern LMPs which I adore. And technically this is my favourite modern LMP, although I must say it is so close between these three. The Aston Lola, this car, the Cadillac LMP, and the next one, which we'll get to in a second, are undoubtedly my three favourite LMP cars. This one to me, the Cadillac, it's such an underdog. It reminds me of the BMW V12 LMR. It's got that smooth, simple design, very low, flat, wide body with relatively few accoutrements. It's just a simple, streamlined looking LMP. It's powerful, it's torquey, it's got a big, well, actually, it doesn't have a particularly big engine, around a four litre, if I recall. But what it can do is way better than a Cadillac should be. <laughs> you know, Cadillac, they're luxury cars, they're these big land yachts. But then they build this. And of course, it didn't have amazing success overall, but I just love it. I love everything about it. I love the balance of the handling. The look of it is stunning to me. It almost looks like it never actually raced. It looks like it was just a concept, but they actually did race it, which is so cool. Now, moving on from this one to probably my very close second, just above the Aston. This is the one that I was thinking of when I misquoted the fact that the Cadillac had a big engine, and that is, of course, the Panos. The Panos LMP1 Roadster S, the Batmobile of prototypes. Yes, Nissan did the front engine or front mid engine prototype with the GTR Nismo, but Panos did it first. In fact, for such a small company, Panos did a lot of things first. They were also the first team to ever make a hybrid Lamar car with the so called Sparky GTR1 in the 90s. They're an amazing company, they designed the Delta Wing, which Nissan tried to steal from them, and of course rest in peace to Don Panos, who died not that long ago, within around a month or two. So this one to me, it's just the pure brute badass of modern LMP. It's got that big, I think it's a 6.2 litre if I recall, it might be a 6 litre V8. It's a crowd favourite for the sheer sound, very powerful, extremely fast, completely different handling signature to the others as well because of the front mid-engine, but actually in a good way. Unlike the Nissan, it's super competitive, and in oval racing in particular, in Forza 4, this thing was a dominant force. It would actually bring the heat against stuff like 787Bs and Sauber C9s, despite the fact that 
the Sauber, for instance, had a much higher top speed, the Panos was still an amazing car around the Indy Oval. Next up, going back to the world of Cadillac, but now moving away from Le Mans, we're going to quite possibly my favourite American classic of all time. But again, very difficult for me to classify. There are so many that I love. The 1959 Cadillac Buritz. I adore this car. To me, it is everything that is America in the 50s. It is the singular American icon of design. It's got the biggest fins in the era of fins. It's one of the largest cars ever built. Not quite as big as the Chrysler Imperial, but a way better looking car, I think. It's got so many lights on the front, but yet doesn't look ridiculous. It could very easily look like a circus float, but it doesn't. It looks like this gorgeous, again, like the Rapide, this elegant classic I love the open top, which is what we had in the game. I like the hard top as well, the Coupe de Ville. To me, it's just a perfect classic. It's powerful, yes, it's fast to some degree, but with the massive wheelbase, it's not exactly a competitive track car. And in a similar way to the next vehicle, which I'll also discuss, I just love this one from the point of view that I, I can't quite believe that they included it in the game. And it's so cool that they did, because it's pretty useless as far as race cars go or track cars. But it's just fun. It's just such a nice car to have in the game. And the next one leading straight on from that is the reason why I'm never sure about calling the Cadillac my favourite, because to me this one is so close. The Lincoln Continental. From 1962, I love the Lincoln Continental. Specifically this one, though. It has to be the 62 for me. I don't like any of the others as much. To me, the others look more... I don't know, they're more swoopy, whereas this one... It just looks to me like a tuxedo. If a car could be a tuxedo, it would be the Lincoln Continental. Black with white wool tires, big 7-litre naturally aspirated V8, 300 horsepower, about 450 pound-feet. Is it fast? No. The wheelbase is ridiculously long. Again, it's a land yacht. But this would be probably in my more expanded idea of a dream garage as far as just having a cruiser. Something just to go low and slow to look good. To me, that is exactly what this is, and the Cadillac covers that base as well. But the Cadillac is very over the top, whereas the Lincoln, it's a little bit more subtle and more classy, I think. And I love them both, overall. Next up for me is a car which I, I was going to have to include Forza 4 until recently. Now in Forza Horizon 4, it has returned, of course, as a barn find. One of the quickest cars ever in the franchise, thanks to the new tuning. The TVR Speed 12. Of course I have to feature this. It's arguably the fastest British car ever built, which is very arguable considering that it was never proven, but I believe it would have been. And I believe that to this day, if somebody could actually be bothered to test one, uh, well, find one <laughs> and test one, I think it could still beat the McLaren F1. But I love this car, of course. It's, as I've mentioned a few days ago, uh, when we were talking about the SSC Ultimate Aero again, in fact, last week, it's the blunt object to the uh, more sophisticated McLaren F1, but just as well engineered, it just happens to do it in a different way. Of course, I love the Speed 12, it's good to have you back. Next up for me is a car which I have discussed before about bringing cars back, but not so much does it come up in my absolute favourites discussion. I believe I did include this one though in my top 50. And it's a funny occasion for me because usually I wouldn't love a car like this as much as I do. But there's just something about this vehicle that appeals to me. The Devon. The Devon GTX. This was featured in Forza 4, I believe. I think that was the only motorsport game to have it. And I think it might have been featured in Forza Horizon as like a VIP car or something like that. But it's based, for those who don't know, on the Viper. When the Viper's production ended, uh, this company, Devon, wanted to rebody it and basically sell it as a full-on supercar. So you've got the same 8.4 litre, 640 horsepower, I believe it is, V10, but instead of the standard Super Sports Viper body, you've got gullwing doors, fully enclosed cockpit, more bespoke look and vibe. The performance is at least as good as the Viper, so you're looking at about 205, 210 miles per hour, 0 to 60, about 3.5. But the difference with the Devon is it's not just this Pebble Beach style one-off creation. It's a car that was actually proven. They took this car to Laguna Seca and it broke the record. Now, it's it's since been beaten again, but 
that alone to me makes me even more impressed by it and unfortunately the company I don't believe is around anymore but I still love the car to me this is the only incarnation of anything Viper related that I would seriously consider wanting to own because it's just such a cool car initially I wasn't sure what I thought of the look but as happens quite a lot for me, it grew on me over time to the point where I actually love the look of this thing now and I like it a lot more than the Viper, which a lot of Viper fans obviously won't like to hear, but at least the spirit of the Viper could have lived on in this vehicle. And last, and kind of least, <laughs> let's be honest on this occasion, is a car that is no longer in the franchise in Horizon, but is in the franchise in Forza Motorsport 7 which is an interesting choice, unless of course it's one of those cars that you can only win, or that they haven't brought it back to the game yet. The Audi Q7. Probably my favourite SUV overall in terms of the sports category. In fact, actually I'm not so sure about that, there are, there are a ton that I like. It's not so clear cut as with trucks, but the Q7 V12 to me is just such a cool idea, having this essentially Lamar derived 5.5 litre diesel V12 with a twin turbo, around 500 horsepower, whatever it is, 750 pound feet of torque. It's not the quickest thing around. It can be beaten by stuff like the Mercedes ML63 or the top of the range Jeep, but it's just a cool car to me. I love diesels. I love the Touareg V10. I love the Q7 V12. I wish there were more high performance diesels. I wish somebody would actually make a production diesel supercar. Although for marketing, I understand why nobody has. I love it. This is one of those cars which I've loved more over time than I did when I was actually playing the game. And now that it's not featured in Horizon, I do kind of miss it. But of course it is in Forza 7, as you can see here. So that's actually it for my 15. These are my 15 favourite vehicles of the franchise, and although there are definitely tons more that I love, the Selina 7, the Spider Coda Tronca, plenty of others too, the Ascari even, the Porsche 962 was difficult to leave off, but to me I had to level it up, or narrow it down even, <laughs> to the cars that I just love driving the most in the game, and sometimes that can be more than just having a favourite. You can have a favourite car that you don't necessarily drive that often, more of like an artistic favourite, whereas these are the ones that I love to drive the most, the ones that I miss the most in some cases, and the ones that I have the fondest memories of from the whole franchise. So of course, there'll be tons of comments down below, your top 5, top 10, top 15, honourable mentions or otherwise, and that's it for this countdown. So next week we may do, again, a similar thing to the Gran Turismo lists, where I look at my favourite circuits of the franchise, but of course that is for next week, and for now, I'll see you then. But, as always, thanks for watching.